Hello and welcome to Following Truth Bible Study on YouTube. In this video, we're going to be looking at unicorns in the Bible. It is often stated when attacking the Bible, how can anyone take seriously a book that includes unicorns? It's a reasonable question. Nobody has ever proven that unicorns exist or in fact have ever existed. Not one fossil of one single bone of a unicorn has ever been found. Unicorns are mythical creatures and not part of reality. A book that includes them as if they were real cannot be taken seriously, and I would agree. Yet I fully 100% believe in the Bible. So how do I reconcile these two seemingly irreconcilable things? It's pretty simple. When people today think of the word unicorn, they automatically imagine the horse-like creature with a single horn protruding from its head, sometimes with wings. This creature is almost certainly a mythical creature. As we have already established, no proof of his existence has ever been found. Any book that includes this creature as if it was real should not be given any credit. However, this is not the unicorn that is mentioned in the Bible. The word unicorn is referred to nine times in the KJV version in verses such as Deuteronomy 33, 17. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. Other versions, such as the NIV and ESV, use word uh, wild ox instead. In majesty, he is like a firstborn bull. His horns are the horns of a wild ox, NIV. A firstborn bull, He's, he has majesty, and his horns are the horns of a wild ox, ESV. So, the argument, the Bible mentions unicorns, actually only works if we take the KJV version of the Bible. If a person uses the NIV or the ESV, they can simply say unicorns are not mentioned in the Bible, but are actually mentioned in a Bible translation. The correct translation is wild ox, and so your argument fails. But what about those like myself that do use the KJV Bible and think that the KJV translation is correct? How do we work out that unicorn and not wild ox is the correct word to use? Now, all these word uh, uses of the word unicorn appear in the Old Testament and are translated from the Hebrew word ring. The KJV translates this as unicorn in all nine uh, uses of the word. So why is unicorn and not wild ox the correct translation? Firstly, Ox has its own Hebrew word, shore, which is not being used in the nine uh, verses. And is it is translated as ox by both the NIV and the ESV in verses such as Exodus 23, 12. Six days do your work, but on the seventh day do not work so that your ox and your donkey may rest. NIV. Six days you shall do your work, but on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may have rest. ESV. Secondly, it cannot be a wild ox. A wild ox is simply an ox that is wild. In a passage in Job, we are told that the reem, translated as wild ox in the NIV and unicorn in the KJV, cannot be tamed. Job 39.9. Will the wild ox consent to serve you? Will it stay by your manger at night? Can you hold it to the furrow with a harness? Uh, NIV. Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee, or abide by thy crib? Canst thou bind the unicorn with his band in the furrow? KJV. However, a wild ox, a shore, can be tamed. Therefore, the use of wild ox does not work 
But we have already established that unicorns are not real. So how is unicorn still the correct word to use? In the original 1611 edition of the KJV Bible, the translators used two slashes known as a siglum. They were used throughout the Bible. In Isaiah 34, 7, it is used before the word unicorn, and they uh, then placed the two slashes again in the margin, along with the word uh, or rhinoceros. This was the word for rhinoceros in 1611. The KJV translators clearly linked the word unicorn with the rhinoceros. The Oxford English Dictionary states the origin of the word unicorn, Middle English, via Old French, from Latin unicornis, from uni, single, and cornu, horn, translating the Greek monokoros. Both these words mean one horned. The word unicorn simply means single horned. If we have a look at Job 39.9 in the Greek Septuagint, we will see that the word rim is translated as monokoros. And in Isaiah 34.7 in the Latin Vulgate, rim is translated as unicornus. When Jerome translated the Hebrew into Latin, he translated the Hebrew word rim as unicornus four times and rhinocerotus five times, as we see in the translation of Job 39.9. And today, the scientific name for a one-horned rhinoceros is Rhinoceros unicornis, the greater one-horned rhino, great Indian rhinoceros, or the Indian rhinoceros. The scientific name for a two-horned rhinoceros is Dicorus bicornis. So, in the Latin Vulgate, we have rhinoceros or unicornis, both being used where the KJV uses unicorn, and the scientific name of a rhinoceros being rhinoceros unicornis. If we look at the Webster's Dictionary today, under unicorn, we are given the following definition. Unicorn. 1. A mythical, usually white animal, generally depicted with the body and head of a horse, with a long flowing mane and a tail, and a single, often spiraled horn in the middle of the forehead. 2. An animal mentioned in the Bible that is usually considered an aurochs, a one-horned rhinoceros, or an antelope. Although definition one clearly states the now traditional understanding of the word, it also has a second definition, and clearly states the animal in the Bible considered to be a one-horned rhinoceros. Now, if we have a look at the same dictionary, but from the very first edition back in 1828, we can see that the first definition is that of a rhinoceros, unicorn. One, an animal with one horn, the monocoros. This name is often applied to the rhinoceros. And if we have a look at points two and three, what we will see is that there is simply no definition that referred to a mythical creature, a horse-like animal back in 1828. If we look at the word rhinoceros in this dictionary, the 1828 version, we see that included in the definition is unicorn, rhinoceros, a genus of quadrupeds of two species, one of which the unicorn as a single horn growing almost erect from the nose. This animal when fully grown is said to be 12 feet in length. There is another species with two horns, the bicornus. They are natives of Asia and Africa. So, even today, while the main definition may have changed, a unicorn still can mean a rhinoceros. When the Bible mentions unicorn, 
it is not referring to the mythical horse-like creature, or in fact, the wild ox, as the NIV and ESV would have us think. Very clearly, the creature in question is a specific one-horned rhinoceros, and which was otherwise known as a unicorn. It is not referring to a two-horned rhinoceros, but specifically a one-horned rhinoceros, which is why they use unicorn. So, if you want to change the word in the KJV, then you have to change it to its correct meaning, which is one-horned rhinoceros. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already to uh, be updated for when we upload new videos. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Shalom.